afternoon, good morning, and welcome to today's webinar, um, SDL Multitrans Product up Update Webinar. The speakers today are Sh Shirley Cody, who's the Senior Product Manager for SDL Multitrans, and Daniel Brockman, the Principal Product Manager for SDL Trados. We expect today's webinar to last around 30 minutes, followed by a Q&A session. If you do have any questions, then please put them in the Q&A box, which is in the Ask Question tab. I'm now going to pass over to Shirley to begin the presentation. Thank you. So today we're going to go through some general announcements on, on Multitrans, on what's going on with us. Um, what's new in Multitrans, that's so the new release that just came out about a month ago. Well, then we're going to go into a live demo of the Multitrans and Trado Studio integration and followed up by a Q&A session where, of course, feel free to ask any questions you may have. So first of all, starting with some general announcements. Um, the first point I'd like to make is the SDL community page. So there's now a Multitrans community on the SDL community pages, and we strongly encourage everybody to sign up to this. So this is something that our, our customers have been asking for for a long time, a place where they can communicate with other users, a place where they can see product announcements as they're ready, so on here, we're putting on when there's a new version, when there's a new build, when there's a new patch, when there's any product update at all, you'll see it on the community as well as the release notes, precisely what happens to be in that particular build or patch. Um, you'll see upcoming events, and we will post some tips and tricks, and as I said, you can also communicate with other users there. So super important. If you haven't gone there yet, please do sign up. There is also a means where you can sign up to get email notifications. It shouldn't be very bothersome. It should be, as I said, when there's a new version, a new, um, a new event happening, or a reminder, for example, for the webinar today. Um, so again, I would strongly encourage you to sign up there. Speaking of upcoming events, we do have a multi-trans user conference coming up in Belgium next month. Uh, anybody who's in the area can absolutely feel free to register and join. We'll be presenting roadmap, live demos. There'll be several of us from the Multitrans team at SDL on site to answer questions, facilitate discussions, and so on. Great networking opportunity and, uh, and as I said, demonstrations, live questions uh, as you need them. In October, there is going to be SDL Connect. This is not a multi-trans specific event. This is a, a generic uh, SDL event. It's, it's a rather large event. Uh, there'll be product representation. There'll be new technologies displayed. Uh, again, there will be keynote speakers. There will be all sorts of, of interesting presentations. I would highly recommend if you're in that area or can make it there to attend this as well. So moving on directly into multi-trans. Uh, Multitrans 7. There, there are two very large features being developed or, or new applications developed as part of the latest release of Multitrans. So the first one that I'm just going to speak about, I can't really show it to you today, is the mobile application. In the next week, it's going to be on the Apple App Store and it's also going to be on Google Play. We will send out an announcement. We'll probably announce it through the Multitrans community as soon as it's available, and we'll, of course, post the link somewhere to get it. So what it will be is it's an app, it's an app where you can follow the progress of your Multitrans project. So if you're a project requester, you'll be able to see what actions might be required from you. Maybe there's a quote waiting to be accepted. Um, if you're a linguist, you'll be able to see these are my these are my tasks, this is what's incoming. Um, it is a secure application. You're not going to be allowed to, for example, download documents onto, onto another device. The other usage and the other new feature that comes with Multitrans 7 with this is two-factor authentication. So it will work as a standard two-factor authentication um, type of application. If your project manager mandates that you have to use two-factor authentication, they will register your mobile device in Multitrans. As soon as you go to log in, and that applies to whether it's a single sign-on type of login or whether it's a username and password type of login, um, the, a, a token will be sent to you through your mobile app. 
you'll plug it in, and you'll be able to log into Multitrans that way. So it's just an extra layer of security um, in addition to being able to track your, pro your projects and the progress as you go. So moving on to what everybody is here for, the integration with SDL Trado Studio. So the way this works is we take the Multitrans workflow, we take the Trado Studio desktop application, and basically the two have been linked. The idea is I can log into my studio application. I can see all my Multitrans tasks directly from my studio application. I would then retrieve my tasks. I can manage them, I can work with them directly within Trado Studio. When I'm done, again from Studio, I return them to Multitrans, and the workflow progresses. So as a linguist, I technically don't even need to log into Multitrans. I can work everything I want from Trado Studio. And if I do that, of course, as, as most of you know, and, and you will see live, Trado Studio, of course, is a, a very, very full-featured translation environment. And in addition to um, all the features of the product itself, there is the SDL App Store, which has all kinds of different plugins that you can add on to, to benefit from, whether it's a, a specific grammar checker or a neat little billing tool or whatever it happens to be. There's a ton of different apps available to you, and of course, you can use them all. So the key features here would be that from Trado Studio, you can see all your active and in-progress multi-trans tasks you'd be able to open the task directly. So you'd be able to see your documents, the reference documents, the word counts, whatever it happens to be. You can see it. You can open it directly from Trado Studio. While you're working in Trado Studio, you have access to all the same text bases, the term bases, the team server translation memories that you would have had if you were working directly in Multitrans. So you'll get the same matches as if you were in either the Multitrans XLIP editor, one of the Office plugins, or in the web editor. Um, as I mentioned, you have all the resources from the Trado Studio interface, plus the App Store, anything that you have installed, local translation memories, whatever you might have. When you're done, again from Studio, you take your task, you return it to Multitrans. The workflow progresses normally. The project manager sees that you have returned the task. The next person, maybe, maybe you're the translator, and the next step is a revision. The reviser will see, okay, the task is ready for me. It will be progressed normally. This is also tracked within the audit trails, meaning that you will still be able to see who took the document, who edited the document, who put it back into Multitrans, same as if somebody was working on a project offline for Multitrans. So we're going to jump right into a demo. Um, Please bear with me. I'm just going to share my screen here so you can see it. And at this point, everybody should be able to see Multitrans. So to use this integration, you, you will need Multitrans 7, so the latest version of Multitrans that's out. If you're on an earlier version of Multitrans, please speak to your account managers. We can, we can work out a plan, a schedule with you to get you updated to Multitrans 7. Um, it is a straight upgrade from previous versions. So if you're coming from 6 or 6.1 uh, Multitrans 2017 or Multitrans 2019, it is a very straightforward upgrade path. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a brand new project. And it doesn't matter, over here I'm creating the project as a project manager. It doesn't matter if this is a project incoming from a customer, the same thing applies. There's nothing specific in how the project is created that affects whether or not I'm going to be able to use the, the Trado Studio integration. So I'm just going to pick a random date, translate from English to French. One important point here is we have this allow studio packages to be downloaded. It is selected by default. You can turn it off. You can turn it off at an individual project level or at a project template level. The idea being that you might still have that really secure project that you don't want somebody to take the documents offline for. You can still secure it in here. Um, but if I do choose that I want to be able to work on this through, through Trado Studio, there's nothing special I need to do. The capability is already there. So 
I'm going to add some text bases and term bases. And again, it doesn't matter whether I take this through a project template um, or whether I'm creating this manually. Any text bases, term bases, team server translation memories, anything I put in here is automatically going to be available to the user from Trado Studio. Permissions are, are necessary, of course. So if your end user does not have access to any of your text bases and term bases, they're still not going to have access to them through Studio. So you still need to make sure that your users have access. But over here, as soon as I'm adding them to the project, they're going to have the availability directly in Trado Studio. They don't have to pick them up. They don't have to select them manually. They will be there. So now I'm going to take a document to translate. and I'm going to submit my project. So once my project is submitted, I'll just give it a moment for the screen to catch up to me. So once my project is submitted, again, it doesn't matter what workflow. I don't need a special workflow, and it doesn't matter whether I'm assigning web editor tasks or, um, or manual tasks any sort of workflow I want, I can apply. So over here, I'm adding a very basic workflow, analysis, pre-translation, and then basically translation, proofreading, deliver it. The important thing here is, is that this translator or this reviewer or this project manager would have access directly from Trado Studio. So if I open my project, if I open the document, the details, I run an analysis, and this is important because this is what drives Trado Studio. So the numbers you see in Studio are the numbers it retrieves from Multitrans. The analysis is still done within Multitrans. The file extraction, the pre-translation, if you're doing a pre-translation, is still done within Multitrans. I don't need to do an analysis or a pre-translation. I can work entirely within Trados, but if I want the numbers populated, if I want to be able to invoice later, um, report on the projects later, anything like that, I'm still running this within Multitrans. So all of your automated tasks are happening within Multitrans. Same thing with the pre-translation. I don't need to pre-translate. If I do pre-translate, it's a pre-translated file that's going to be picked up from Trado Studio. If I don't pre-translate, I just have my, my new file that, that's ready for translation, and I can do the whole thing within Trado Studio. So this is what it looks like. It's a regular project. There's nothing special here. I'm just going to quickly log out. And I'm going to log back in as the translator. And I can see here the task that I have to be done. So over here, this is the, this is the project that I just created. So this is the project that I would need. Of course, now, as a translator, I don't need to log into Multitrans. I can just go in through Trado Studio. And with that, I'm going to pass the screen control over to, uh, to Daniel, who's going to show you what it looks like from the Trados perspective. Thank you very much, Shirley. Yeah, um, welcome everyone to today's uh, webinar. And uh, yeah, we'll pick it right up where Shirley left it. So I will share my screen and Bear with me while screen sharing starts. So now you should see my screen. And yeah, basically, as Shirley just said, she has finished creating the project. I'm in studio, and I would now like to pick up the work and uh, send it back to her so that she can then move it along in the workflow. And basically, in a nutshell, what you need for this is the latest Studio 2019 service release 2, which we actually released last week. So it's very timely that we have the webinar this week because we can show you the latest uh, on this. So that's one thing, Studio 2019 is 2. And the second thing that you need is a plugin, so an, an app from the App Store, if you like, which we call the Multitrans Integration Plugin for Studio, which then gives you the um, functionality needed for retrieving, uh, seeing the task, um, retrieving the task and working on them which is what I will do. So you can see here on my screen, this is uh, the, the latest studio version as we released it uh, last week. It's the familiar environment for Trados users. For those of you, you who might have seen it before, it's exactly the same as you, um, uh, yeah, as you know it. 
However, the one thing that is new then, when, once you've installed the plugin, you get a new view in Studio, which then lets you zoom in and focus on the multi-trans task. So I will do that right away. Um, you have seen that Shirley quickly logged into the Multitrans website with a certain user. I'm using exactly the same user here. I've pre-selected all the credential information so that I don't have to retype it in. I'm signing in. And then you can see here that um, these are the tasks that I should work on. It's interesting because uh, I've got three tasks actually, but uh, obviously right now I want to focus on the task that Shirley put in for me uh, just a minute ago, which is this one. So it's very easy to work on this. First of all, you of course get some high-level information on the project. Uh, you get uh, information around the fuzzy matches as well. Um, and then uh, it's very easy. You have a button here, only one button on the ribbon. can't be easier than this, uh, but you can also right-click on the task and basically say, okay, uh, open this as a multi-trans project in Studio, which I will do. So it's then downloading the package for me. And I can uh, basically, from here, it's really Studio territory. So uh, if you know Studio, you know that you can work with project packages in all kinds of uh, shapes and sizes and formats, and Multitrans is no exception. So we have a new project format that we support, which is Multitrans in this case, and I get a very straightforward to use wizard here, which tells me, okay, take a look at what you actually need to do. So I can have a quick preview. Okay, I know it's 568 words that I need to do. Um, who has assigned this to me? I've got a certain folder where I can save files locally. Uh, but really, I don't need to do anything because everything is, is uh, preset for me and can just click Finish. And then basically the package gets imported and I'm taken back to the project screen in Studio, which I have uh, cleaned out a bit leading up to the webinar, but if I was working in a normal Studio, let's say, not just the demo version, then I would have lots and lots of projects on this list. But right now, I just have um, the, these Multitrans projects plus the sample project that we ship a studio with. Um, that's what I can see here. But as Shirley said, what's really nice about this is that now I'm, I'm in the fully featured studio environment and I can use um, almost all of the productivity features that studio has because we want to really focus on getting the best of both worlds, right? So on the one hand, you have the Multitrans uh, product, of course, where you can do all the project management tasks where you have the productivity in the, in the project management and workflow. And then when it comes to the translator or reviewer side, then you have Studio where you have all the productivity at your fingertips that uh, this environment gives you. So let me just work on this and show you a few things while I'm doing it. So I'm opening the project as I normally would, which then gives me the file that Shirley added earlier, which is the press uh, release, which I can double click on. And then basically what happens is I go right into the Studio uh, editor environment where I'm getting what I would normally get from, uh, from uh, any kind of project. I'm seeing an editor environment with a side-by-side -side source target segment view. Um, you might hear in my accent that I'm a German, and, but I will try to be bold today and translate uh, two or three sentences into French. Bear with me if my French is not fully correct, but I had some French at university, so I know a bit of French, so that's, that's cool. Um, but uh, just to set your expectations there. But yeah, I'm, I'm just seeing the normal studio environment, and what's nice is I'm seeing both translation memory matches as well as terminology matches as I would normally see. Uh, also, if I go to the project settings, uh, I can see that um, I'm connected. Like Shirley said, I didn't need to do anything. The Multitrans uh, TM and text base, whatever I might use, is available from a, at the translation memory level. And at the same point, uh, time, also the Multitrans term base is available, really tightly integrated with uh, Studio, so all these uh, main resources are available and I can use them. On top of that, I would have all kinds of other uh, productivity features, so I can set up my QA checker maybe, uh, that I want to check my punctuation, let's say. Uh, all the rich functionality that Studio gives you is available in terms of all the, the features and functions that Studio has that give you just the productivity for the translation or review task itself. Uh, for now, though, let me just uh, work through a few segments so you can see how, how this works. Obviously, my first sentence is, is great because it's 100% uh, match. But already the second one, if I click on it here, is already interesting because you might see that I see the French translation pour publication immediate. 
great that I have that, but actually I don't even see a translation memory match. So why did this, was this pre-translated? Well, in the Martichans pre-translation process, uh, we're not only translating based on translation memory content, but also where it applies the terminology itself. And in this case, I'm having a segment that is just a term for immediate release, uh, pour publication immediate, and I see this also here in the term recognition window. I even have the ability to view the term details. Um, at least most of the time, it, it works as expected. So basically, I can click through and uh, see the information there. And so that's great. Uh, but I also wanted to show you, let's assume I'm deleting this target if I now start typing. Um, I'm getting what we call auto-suggest, which is one of the key productivity features that have been around in Studio for, for a very long time. Um, and it's great to just be able to type and then Studio making suggestions what I might want to type. And in this case, of course, what I might want to type is a term. And it even goes as far as saying, well, it's in all capital letters, so why would I not just take the, the all capital letters uh, translation here? Uh, which comes from the term back. So all the auto-suggest functionality is available. As Shirley mentioned, um, all these features are there. It doesn't stop there, though. So if I maybe confirm this segment, go to the third one, I'm seeing uh, a, a segment that has actually not been translated, media relations, which still says media relations in the target. So I would now need to find the French translation. And as I mentioned, I'm a German. So can I use any resources in Studio that help me with this? And this is where the apps come into play and the, all the um, plugins that you can use to increase your productivity and, and have everything at your fingertips. And I wanted to show you one particular example. We have more than 200 apps in the App Store, so there's quite a lot for you to discover there. Uh, but on this one, I want to you know, see if I can look up media relations in Lingui, for example. Lingui is a uh, website where you can look for terms in various uh, languages. Quite a nice one. I'm quite a fan of it. So how do I uh, do that? For example, I can uh, select my term here that I want to look up, so maybe here in the source. And then I can right click, and I have here the, the feature web lookup. You can actually see quite some other things here which I installed over time, but I've got quite some apps installed in my studio version, including things like Antidote, uh, where we have a plugin uh, that uh, helps you with um, you know, maybe linguistically checking your uh, grammar and, and, and your text using that. Uh, but in this case, I just want to use Web Lookup. So what then happens is that right when I do that, let me maybe uh, plug this or um, uh, attach this window to my studio instance. So here, really nicely, media relations has been put into this as a search, ter search term. Lingui gives me the translations. It says that this is probably a relation avec les médias. Could also be relation de presse, but it's uh, less common, so I would probably want to take this term. And what's then nice is obviously I can copy this from here and paste it back into Studio. I could also look, of course, at all the usage examples that Lingui brings. So that's quite a rich set of functionality that I could use. Let me now hide it again so that I can focus again on the editing itself. I just wanted to show you an example there. And now I should be able to paste this. And I should then probably also make the first letter uh, capitalized here because it's kind of a, a heading. So that is uh, just a glimpse at what Studio can do. There's lots more. Um, display filters, uh, review functionality, go to find replace, concordance searching will be added in, in future as well. Uh, what is also interesting is, of course, I can at any point in time go to my project settings and maybe use some machine translation that I might have. Uh, or I might add uh, just a Trada translation memory to this um, if I wanted to. So there's quite a few options, obviously, also that you can combine to make you more productive. But I guess for the demo today, that's it. I would now basically save the file and um, return the project to Shirley, uh, which I can do from the project view, for example. So here now I can right-click on the, the document. Of course, I wasn't fully done, so I should have completed, but we don't have the time. I would just say now return Multitrans package, which then I can just do in a simple wizard again, where I basically say finish. And then you can see that the package uh, gets uploaded to Multitrans. And with that, I can stop the sharing here and, and hand it back to Shirley. Thank you, Daniel. So I'm going to uh, go back into Multitrans at this point. Let me just get my screen shared.
So I'm back in multi-trans. And again, as you can see from what Daniel showed you, he didn't touch multi-trans at all. So as, as a linguist, he was able to take his project, um, work on his project, translate, review, whatever his task was, and then return it to multi-trans. So I'm just going to show you quickly here. I'm still logged in. Again, we're both using the exact same user. So if I just refresh my page here, I can see that my task is gone. And if I were to go to my workflow, I would see equivalently that the task has been delivered, it has been progressed. And as I mentioned before, it's going to be in my audit trail that it was downloaded by this user into Trados and then re-uploaded. So we have basically the, the full workflow process. The, the thing that has, the, the big deal here is that the whole project was translated within Trado Studio instead of within Multitrans. But the workflow, everything remains exactly the same. So I'm going to move back to, uh, to our presentation. Give me a moment, please, for my screen to refresh. And we're going to talk a little bit about, uh, about what's coming up next. Okay, so first of all, how do you get this? Well, it requires Trado, Trado Studio 2019 SR2. So the new release that Daniel and his team just put out, you will need to upgrade to that. You will need Multitrans 7 or later, and you'll need the plugin from the SPL App Store. So the link to the App Store is there. On the Multitrans community, we've also posted the link directly to the, the Multitrans app. And there are user guides available, and that's all in the information of, uh, of this webinar. So you should have all the links available to you. Of course, in the event of any questions, feel free to reach out to your account manager who can guide you to any of this information. The plugin is free, so you do need Trados, you do need Multitrans, but assuming you have both, um, you can just link in. If you have a Multitrans client and you want to try this out, please speak to us. And we can absolutely look at, uh, at, at let, having you trial this and, and see what, we, what arrangements we can make um, changing some of the multi-trans desktop licenses for Trado Studio licenses. So a few questions that we've had, um, uh, well, a few, a few of our most frequently asked questions first, and then we'll move on to the audience questions. Can I control which users have access to download the project? So yes, you can. So especially if you're working in an environment where you have some internal linguists, some external linguists, and maybe you want to keep your, your project on your server or inside your network. This is done on a user-by-user -user basis. Within Multitrans, you can say, my internal users or this particular user has access to download the project to Trado Studio. The rest of the users do not have access to download the projects to Strato Studio. So you do have an element of control still in, in who can access what. The next one, can I control which projects and related content can be downloaded? And again, the answer is yes. You can, uh, we saw when I created the project in Multitrans that I had the option there saying, let this be downloaded, let this not be downloaded. If you're concerned and you don't want your projects downloaded, then I recommend using a project template and turning it off by default and then making it available as you need it. Um, but for the most part, if you do want this available, it's there. And then finally, does this replace the Multitrans web editor? Um, that's a little bit more complicated of a question. So that, that's a, a yes and no. Um, it does require the desktop installation of Trado Studio. So if you do have that, then absolutely it can replace the, the web editor. If you have a mandate to keep your files online, then no, it does not replace the, the online editor. So if there's no issue and if you're keeping the files in your network or so on, you can absolutely use Trado, Trado Studio instead of the web editor. Um, as Daniel showed you with the functionality, there's just so much functionality available in the Trado Studio desktop client that if you can use it, we would absolutely encourage it. So the next thing to talk about, uh, Daniel, did you want to take this? Yes, thank you, Shirley. Um, actually, this will also start answering some of the questions we are seeing from the audience. So thanks a lot to the audience for, for asking these questions. Um, so actually, one of the questions we have is exactly the first point. 
Is it possible to attach and use Multitrans resources independently without the project itself being created in Multitrans? Not yet, but that's one of the key things we want to do. So you have seen the um, providers in studio, they come with the package from Flow, if you like. Um, so that is something that is right now just available as part of that flow. But what we want to do as one of the next steps is to make these providers available independently so that you can plug them in to any kind of project, not just Multitrans tasks that you downloaded. So that would be the first point, and I can mark this as answered on our um, question list. Uh, then the second question, or the second bullet point, also answers the question that we have. So the question that we got is, hi Daniel, do we have full concordance search? At this point, no. So that's one of the key things we want to do. Um, and uh, it's on the, on the roadmap then in the, in the short term is to basically be able to say in studio, select any kind of text uh, fragment and look it up in the concordance. So that uh, will come at a, a point not in the not too distant future. Um, and then um, we have the third point, which is also quite key. So you have seen live terminology in studio from Multitrans, which was great. Um, what is not yet possible, though, is to uh, use the what we call the terminology verifier that can make sure that the source terminology has been uh, translated using the dedicated terms that you might have in your term base. Uh, and we have a check for this in studio, but that doesn't yet work with uh, multi-trunk terminology, so that's something we want to do. And then down the line, um, what we also want to do is to integrate what we call secure studio. That's actually something that is not yet fully live with Studio SR2. Um, but that's a key concept that we want to bring to the market, um, hopefully towards the end of this year, beginning of next year, where basically there will be a new studio way of working or studio project mode where um, you will be able to send a project to studio in a secure mode, if you like. And what that then means for studio is that the project that download some files locally, as you've seen, right? I created, I opened the, the, the Multitrans task and then some files were put on my local hard disk. Those would be fully encrypted. So if you take a look at these files outside of Studio, you would not um, see anything or you would just see gibberish, let's say, encrypted, encrypted characters. Um, and uh, this would mean that the content would be totally secure in Studio and no one else could touch it. You're not able to copy-paste um, content outside of Studio into another application, for example. So if you have highly confidential content where you want to make sure that your supply chain can't send any content outside of the translation task itself, then this will be interesting for you. Um, there's quite some work that we still need to do on this. It's quite a big project, so that's why this will probably be a bit further down the line. But um, it's an important piece that we want to deliver, not just in the context of Multitrans, but also for other products that we have. In, in SDL in terms of translation management where it's often important to make sure that content stays fully confidential across the supply chain. Um, and so far in studio, you just have the content there. It's something that you can address with that down the line. Um, so that would be uh, the, the integration roadmap. Maybe back to you, Shirley. Thank you. So with that, we'll move on to the remaining questions that, uh, that we have received. So thank you, everybody, who has put in a question. And I'd like to remind you that, um, that you can still put questions in the chat box when we are absolutely available to answer them. So we do have a question about the roadmap for Multitrans as a whole and Flow more specifically. And will the Multitrans client or web editor or Flow be replaced or integrated with SDL Tratus? So the integrated is an absolute yes. This is what we're, we're showing today that uh, that flow is integrated. And as Daniel said, we plan to take the integration a bit deeper with concordance searches, terminology validation. The secure studio um, piece that I explained to you is very critical uh, for us from a web editor perspective. Um, right now, we do recognize that people use the web editor to keep documents secure to keep them on their server. What Daniel was explaining is another methodology. So it might give you an option to use, instead of using the web editor, to be able to transfer these encrypted files that would then be locked down. You wouldn't have access to copy, paste, move them to other users. So it is a possibility. It's not going to replace the web editor, but it will be there as a possibility for the web, instead of the web editor, 
um, or in addition to the web editor for those more secure projects. We do intend to, uh, to keep developing multi-trans. Um, as a general roadmap comment, I'm not going to get into a full roadmap uh, presentation at this point, but as a general comment, um, part the, the roadmap that we're looking at over the next several months will be furthering the integration as well as it, we'll be adding a few smaller features, but a lot of the focus in the roadmap is going to be um, to basically uh, stabilize and improve what's already there rather than add a whole a whole pile of new features. So you may see uh, you may see longer lists of, of those long-standing issues resolved rather than this big fancy new feature coming up in the next few months. So I'll mark that one as answered. Um, Daniel, do you want to take the next question about the project being removed or disabled? Yeah. Uh, so um, the. Project is still available in Studio, so you can still go in there and make some some uh, changes to your files, so that you can then um, uh, update the task as needed. There's still some work that we need to do to make this really smooth and and as powerful as possible. Uh, but the project stays in Studio. Um, however, as you have seen, it anyway goes then back to Marditrans, and then you know in Marditrans the project manager might assign it to a reviewer, so the content would quickly get out, outdated anyway in Studio. Um, but it's something that we are in studio, uh, in our studio universe, we are quite keen on giving the translator and, and, and the linguist as much flexibility as possible and not force any way of working on them. Um, however, in this case, it just makes sense for the, for the user to maybe then manually to, um, remove the project once, once it's completed. Um, uh, but that's something that uh, would stay also in studio if you want to for any reason, come back to it, maybe also to look up a translation you did previously or something like that. So that would be my answer on that one. Thank you. Um, so the next then will this integration retain the possibility of running multi-trans comparisons on Word files? I visualize leverage with highlight text in addition to statistical analysis. So this integration does not touch our add-in in Office at all. So this, this is in addition to what's already available. Um, I, I, I can't, uh, yeah, it, it doesn't change anything in the existing functionality within Multitrends. It, it's something extra. You cannot get the same um, visual representation that I believe we're speaking here about the text-based agent. So that's not available from Studio directly, but it is still available in Word and PowerPoint. So I'll mark that one as answered. Um, so we have another question where we have both Multitrans and Trado Studio. Do we need to install the new product to, to replace them? Um, you, don't, you would need to upgrade both products to be able to take advantage of this connection. So if you have Multitrans, a more recent version of Multitrans, 2017 or 2019, you would need to update that to Multitrans 7. Um, if you have Trado Studio, you would need to update that to Trado Studio 2019 SR2. And then you'd need to install the plugin. And the plugin is, is really simple. It's a double click and, and install type of plugin. And as mentioned, the links should be available with the webinar and it is free of charge so you can just take it and add it in. Um, any need to transfer data, text bases and term bases? No, there's not. So from Trado Studio, you're connecting directly to your multi-trans text bases and term bases as they are. And what about the integration of machine translation modules incorporated in our different tools? That's an excellent question. Uh, not that they aren't all excellent questions, but uh, that's a new one. So in multi-trans, you do have a connector to machine translation engines. And so if you were to pre-translate from multi-trans using machine translation, those pre-translations would be transferred into Trado Studio. You also do have an option from Trado Studio to connect to machine translation engines, at which point you'd be working with those directly within Trado Studio. So the option is there, and it's actually there from both sides, and you could really configure it either way you, cho you chose, to, to get the machine translation from Multitrans or to take it from Trado Studio. It's available in both places. So I'll mark that one as, as answered. Um, 
Is there a takeaway message for current users of the Multitrans client, the CAT tool here? Are we expected to migrate to SDL Trado Studio in the future? So there is no expectation that everybody is dropping the Multitrans client and moving to Trado Studio. Trado Studio is the industry-leading CAT tool, and it is that for a reason. Daniel, when he gave the de his, his demo within Trado Studio, he barely touched on some of the features and the functionalities that are available. So you can absolutely still connect with the Multitrans XLIF editor or use the web editor to translate with your Multitrans resources. Um, we are offering this because we do recognize that there's a lot of benefit to using Trado Studio. That being said, especially looking at the integration roadmap, there are some key features that are not available yet but are coming soon. The concordance search and the terminology validation are two really big features that we would like to have within Trado Studio, um, and we recognize that the linguists are going to want this too. So um, on the other hand, within the Multitrans desktop client, there are some features that are still that are not available, they're not part of the translation environment. So whether it's managing your text bases, term bases, et cetera. So a really important point is even if you're looking at this integration and saying, this is fantastic, I want this now, you need to keep at least one or two multi-trans desktop clients around. You cannot do a full switch for the Trado Studio desktop client because you will lose the ability to manage your text bases, manage your term bases, and so on. So this is a fantastic replacement for the translation environment, but it cannot at this point replace the multi-trans desktop client. So I will mark that one as answered. If, uh, if we didn't answer one of your questions as completely as you'd like, or if you do have specific questions to your own environment or your own usage, please feel free to reach out afterwards. We're more than happy to talk about your individual situations. Great. Thanks, Shirley and Daniel, for presenting today. And thanks for attending today's webinar. Uh, don't forget to visit the, the attachments and links sections that we've talked about, where you'll find some useful information and links to um, various things. Um, the recording will be available here on Bright Talk straight after the webinar, but we'll also be actually sending out a copy of the, um, the recording to everyone who's registered. Um, we just want to say, hope you found today's session useful, and we look forward to seeing you again on one of our next webinars. Have a great rest of day. Thanks, everybody.